Hello my dear friends, this is a painter cat and today we're going to paint cityscape. I'm starting from basic level of white and also I left 7 cm from bottom part of my list of paper for water part. While uh, white layer, basic layer is still a little bit wet, I add here a uh, cobalt blue plus ultramarine plus uh, a bit of violet. Uh, I put here some dots and uh, I'm blending now wet uh, paints on my uh, working area. I'm blending with a flat oval brush, a uh, big sized brush. Uh, first I blend it. Uh, with horizontal moves and now I'm blending with putty. Imagine you trying to put a really uh, nice layers of um, foundation of, on your face, right? And uh, you will do it without any long strokes, you're just parting with lots of moves, right? Uh, the same way we're working here and um, we blending these horizontal lines we still have right after step one uh, we will have in the end very soft and cloudy effect look i'm not doing any strokes at all i'm just parting my paper now imagine uh, you have just a half of your uh, sky and uh, on the upper part, um, on upper half, uh, I'm going to add more white because I want to have a really cloudy sky. Um, not a clouds um, as it is, but cloudy effect, very soft, very light. And here I'm going to paint a tower and the dark tower will look just with more contrast if we have a lighter sky uh, behind it. I think I'm happy enough now. Um, as I told you, I don't want to create a really clouds, but just a cloudy effect. Um, I'm going to demonstrate you. This is my mole stick. Um, this is a helping plank, wooden plank look. Uh, it's possible to put on table and still we have some area between paper and plank. Not everyone have a mole stick at home, so I'm going to show you another tip. Uh, I'm going to use a transparent ruler and two rolls of uh, tape. I just put my ruler on two rolls and still I have a distance between ruler and my paper that's still a little wet, so I can't just put ruler on paper. This is important, we have to keep a distance. And now imagine you're just touching edge of ruler with a pole of your brush and with this help, right, you able to create more straight horizontal and vertical lines. I used uh, umber and white for tower line first and now I'm going to create a roof. For roof I um, choose more um, blue. I just added a cobalt blue to my mix of uh, umber and white. Uh, I'm not going to create the whole building with this small stick, but it's important to know how to use it, because um, when you're not really experienced to create buildings, are you just uh, creating a really big sized painting, this kind of tool helping to you to keep long lines straight. That's really hard to do without any rulers, but we can't to use it on uh, wet oil or acrylic canvases and uh, papers. 
full roof I'm painting with vertical strokes now I'm just planning with my mold stick I'm planning the um, basic line most important lines on buildings but all details of course uh, I'm creating just with a brush without any help from my mold stick uh, very important what type of brushes you're using for buildings painting. Uh, best shapes, in my opinion, it's uh, flat brushes and uh, flat oval brushes. Also, it uh, can be uh, slanted flat brushes, so we will use it uh, as well today. Uh, and uh, if you're working with uh, big details, you choosing bigger size of brush. If you working with the small details, as uh, for example I'm doing now, I'm taking a smaller sized brush. Buildings and uh, architecture elements in city have a lots of details that we not keeping in our memories. Most of the time we just remembering the building in general but if you will plan to paint it to um, make a cityscape you have to use photo or paint on open air for me for example that's not possible at the moment uh, because uh, city i'm painting now it's looking more as amsterdam or maybe a stockholm I'm living in another city, so I have no ability now to go there and paint there on open air. Also, city where I'm living in the moment, uh, it's the St. Petersburg. It's a really beautiful city with lots of places to paint, dare to paint, right? But um, temperature now outside it's uh, minus 17 degrees, so it's just not possible to work on the street with my paintings. So uh, it's just smart to use photos because it's giving you a lot of information about buildings or city you are painting at the moment. Again, uh, I need some help from my mold stick because I'm going to plant some floors on my tower. It's just, uh, you know, one, two strokes that giving me correct horizontal lines. Uh, when you're using mold sticks or as I do now, this kind of handmade uh, mold stick, uh, it's giving you just a main shape. And after all details, you painting without any help from mold stick. Uh, next brush, next type of brush I'm using, it's a flat oval brush, oval shaped, and it's giving me just uh, absolutely corrected, very nice shaped uh, stroke with oval uh, head, right, with oval top. And uh, this is uh, the end of my tower, the highest floor. Uh, and uh, with my smaller brush, number zero, uh, I can add any details, uh, smallest details on this tower that uh, I want to uh, see there. Also, um, I have plans to create some small spire on top of my tower. This building really far from us, it's almost on a background line. So all details we can see there, just in general, just have a feeling of details. That means you don't have to paint exactly all decorations that you possible can see on your photo. For example, if you're working with a photo, just general and very um, common uh, details and colors. This is important because the center of composition most of the time uh, it's on a, a middle ground or foreground. 
So just keep it in mind and uh, don't over detail the uh, background areas even if uh, it's a really beautiful um, tower or building house. Uh, and uh, when repainting a cityscapes all buildings usually have a lot and lot of details. So it's um, main rule, uh, more details for uh, buildings in front of us on a uh, foreground and less and less as far building we can see on our painting. This tower already very contrasted because uh, I planned a really light uh, sky behind it, so it's just enough color for my tower. It's more uh, brown because it's have lots of umber in mix of uh, paint, and the roof uh, looking more, you know, uh, made of steel. It's uh, grayish and have some blue there. I painted a little spire and now it's time to create some windows on uh, my building, on this tower. Color for windows just the same, it's a colored sky, but uh, if you have windows with glass, right, uh, it have to be a little darker than sky and if uh, you creating the arches on tower means there is no any glass it's not a windows it's a decorative uh, details on tower that's mean it's a really a sky behind it so you can see uh, sky through the tower so the color have to be exactly as a sky above uh, hopefully I explained to you a difference between this uh, kind of uh, elements on um, buildings and now I want to create a window. Uh, also important to know, important to remember, we're not creating outline of any objects, right? Not outlining them and after filling a center with a color, but we creating details with strokes. That's why I recommend you to use uh, flat brushes, different type of brushes. For example, now I'm going to create a building. I think it's kind of stone or bricks um, on walls here, so color it's a red plus umber plus a little bit of ochre can be. It's mixed not completely on my palette, it's just a colors I put there and then I took colors one by one with my brush, topped a little bit on palette, mixed just slightly. It's still different uh, colors on brush same time. And now I'm not creating outline of building first and not feeling this part on my composition, right? Not feeling inside so with the color. I'm painting floor by floor, line by line, following my mole stick. Now you can see clearly how I'm using it. I'm just sliding with a pole of brush following the edge of my mole stick so you have to be uh, you have to get some experience how to do that because pole not fixed to the mole stick to the ruler edge it uh, can move with different angles so uh, some lines can be not really horizontal depends how well you can use it and uh, how well you can understand the technique of using mold stick and uh, if you will do if you will paint with it uh, with time you'll get better and better and you'll see buildings with 
this type of uh, art tool uh, will be just more accurate, you know, uh, because uh, your horizontals will be horizontal, <laughs> right? And the verticals will be a really vertical. Uh, with a dark shade, it's a mix of black and brown, I created shadow from a roof on a building wall and also I'm planning now uh, floors. I have to create three floors. Uh, it's just uh, tiny lines now because all details I will create a bit later. And uh, the white wall, but again I don't like to see there any outline, so I'm blending this thick outline on the right side of building, I blended it in the wall of building. Uh, that's it, now it's time to move uh, to smaller details. Uh, I want to create a window seal. Mm, I'm using today a lot of uh, Google translated terms, so if I'm not really correct um, I have to apologize about it because um, not all terms of architecture details I know correctly in English, so I'm really sorry about that, but I will try my best. So this um, light lines, it's a uh, window seals. Most of the time, even if buildings are really old, this element's new and uh, possibly made with tin. Now I'm creating a big window, it's arch window, again just created with one long stroke. Top part I created with oval shaped brush and bottom part with just a normal uh, straight lined uh, flat brush. Now I'm creating windows with glass in it, on it, <laughs> so um, the color can be uh, not exactly as a color of sky. Here I added more blue because on the front, on the um, foreground I'm planning to paint water uh, and uh, also I painted now vertical line and uh, created a small part of building. Uh, here, as I told you, we uh, can only create some details in general, not uh, very, you know, not exactly as um, it's possible to see on the photos. Mm. And we not copy, we not trying to make a copy of a photo. We really creating just a painting, right? So it um, can be not straight everywhere. You can see uh, usually in the internet some artist works and uh, photos. It's a really huge difference between photos and uh, paintings. I'd say cities on paintings um more lightweight sometimes it's have a foggy effect you know cloudy mm, it's have some rainy effect very beautiful and it's most of the time creating with the fl flat brushes propellant knives so with a long really long strokes this is the intermediate level as i told you uh, and the um, here we actually learning how to transform photo or natural view to the painting, right? To um, transfer on paper or on canvas your artistic view on uh, city in front of you. Now uh, it's time to create small details. Windows usually have slopes on right and the left sides and most of the time it's dark and also it's a 
frames around windows so uh, for these details I'm using a really uh, small brush a tiny brush it's number zero and then painting with a really tip of my brush it's just so you know so tiny lines uh, no any thick and um, really visible dark lines it's just more uh, like a web of a spy web very very thin lines because on this distance we usually can't see clearly any uh, window frames this work uh, this kind of painting taking time so plan plan for this uh, kind of paintings for cityscapes really more time um, than uh, for flowers for example uh, usually this uh, size it's a4 20 30 centimeters it's taking um, usually I'm painting one and a half an hour uh, this painting a little bit more easier so usually it's uh, around one uh, hour for her work uh, also, uh, keep in mind if you're using water, if you're painting with a gouache or uh, acrylic, you will use water for sure. Uh, be sure you changing it uh, because colors look we already used blue, brown, or ochre, red, uh, black. All together in water it's giving really unpleasant uh, color <laughs> that can affect uh, light details light um, mix of colors on your uh, painting so clean brushes even in the middle of your work clean water change water it's important and also if you're using any tissues any napkins or um, wet wipes it's important to change it in time now I'm painting the um, right side of building again uh, I'm trying not to create any outline so this is a uh, yeah long strokes thick strokes that's uh, giving effect uh, you know it's looking more as a really thick wall there uh, also I don't really like how the tower looking now uh, and uh, I want to create some small window on this part it's usually there I checked uh, some photos so uh, we're creating this kind of uh, architecture element uh, with uh, decorative details and a small windows in the center with a blue color of course and a window frame uh, I think on this uh, step I'm pretty happy with this building if we will need any correction it can be right that uh, first we have to set this building in cityscape of course um, this part this building um, most beautiful part in cityscape but it has to be set in um, a landscape I want to create a feeling of street not a street exactly just a feeling uh, of street so first I'm painting a thick stripe it's a dark shaded uh, mix of blue and black and another stroke not that long right um, it's lighter in shade uh, shade the same but uh, just more white there and look now it's you know it looks like it's a street going back there in perspective and we don't have to paint any details on this let's say building anymore it's just looking good enough 
but um, close to my main building I want to create another one more modern right in my left one I'd say more ancient and this is a more modern uh, building uh, so it will have less decorations on it shapes of windows will be different no any arches just uh, normal windows and it's important to give a feeling of perspective for this building because we can see not only a front part of building but also a left wall this left wall we can see in perspective so it have to be lighter far from us but darker on part where where it's touch the front wall so uh, we have to create a really visible difference between light front wall uh, front surface of building and dark um, left side surface of building it's dark because uh, it's a shadow there so I have to create first the dark area but it has to be lighter as far it's going from us I'm also creating some uh, something dark uh, on uh, the right part uh, behind this uh, small building it's probably a forest uh, bluish because it's so uh, far from us uh, it can be a building but uh, I think we already have enough work to do here mm, without any plus buildings behind because it's still you know any details you put on your painting it means plus time to paint uh, I have to wait till my building cube uh, will be dry because it's just more easy to put uh, the second layers, uh, third layers like windows and frames. And um, in this time, I want to create the road in front of my buildings. It's uh, as fort, I think it's as fort can be it also can be a stones but um, asphalt i like more because um, most of the time it's light and i don't want to create any dark road here uh light because um, we know uh, that asphalt is black but it's a knowledge about material if you will look on the nature on the photos uh, asphalt roads uh, really smooth so it's more you know they working as a mirror they reflecting uh, what we have on on top of them so it's a reflection of buildings on asphalt of the sky so for asphalt i'd say choose more um, light gray so it will be more correct also i have a um, bank on the foreground and uh, it's gonna be a dark uh, made with stone and I want to create a contrast between uh, two parts of uh, uh, foreground here as Ford and um, bank uh, here where I'm living now in St. Petersburg we have um, banks covered with a granite and I'm going to create the same color for bank. Just mix a little bit of red, um, umber, maybe ochre, just a little bit of a yellow color. And uh, can be white, but also just a little bit. Mostly it's uh, umber, so brown color. Uh, and uh, just create horizontal uh, wide line uh, it's just enough you know to demonstrate a dark stone here 
Uh, it's nice uh, contrast and uh, it's giving a different layers on the foreground. I don't uh, like um, same color everywhere. It's looking a bit boring. Also, I already planning waterline. I planned it with a black because it's the um, most dark part under the boats. There is a shadow. And um, uh, I'm now planning my future sailing boats here. Um, we will paint it from the nose part. And it's the most simple uh, angle of view for sailing boats. Really so easy to paint. Uh, look, it's now looking as a zigzag line. So each top of this line will be a nose of both. Uh, different colors look, you know, just <laughs> nice uh, here. First, I will paint uh, dark blue. It's um, cobalt blue. I added beet black, right? And from the nose edge, it's again uh, black plus cobalt. It's important to create contrast between two sides of sailing boats. And it's always contrasted line between one part and another one part. So many comments today from me. Uh, hopefully it will help to you to create uh, this uh, cityscape or another cityscape if you will make any changes or just use um, tips from uh, this tutorial for your own paintings but composition really not easy another boat uh, I created it's a light brown more looking as amber shade Mm, I visited uh, Amsterdam and uh, Stockholm and there is lots of really colorful boats, old boats. Um, if you will go to modern uh, marine, marine it's a place where sailing boats um, stay, mm, they are mostly white sailing boats, but uh, for our composition I say um, it's just, you know, uh, looking more interesting and colorful in general. So, um, I would like uh, more, you know, these um, different colors for sailing boats instead of just white and gray. I want to um, add white stripes also here. Uh, usually, they are uh, name, the title of boat placed there, but um, size of our painting not big enough to paint there any uh, words, any titles for boats. Uh, also, I'm painting with a flat brush and uh, doing each line with just one long stroke. That's it, our sailing boats done. I think it's, you know, it's looking kind of interesting. And again, it's a very easy uh, angle of view for boats. Now I have to create a mast. Uh, there is a little rule about it. If uh, you have a building behind mast and it's a dark, uh, paint with white, but if you have a um, light background, so you have to paint mast with a dark color. Before we will be able to create a mast 
uh, with the dark colors we have to um, complete this modern building so I have, I have to paint a roof it's a very light almost white in front and have a shadow on the left part it's uh, can be even white mm, this triangle on front because uh, material for uh, modern roofs it can be tin and uh, it's very very reflecting material metal so um, can be really really light it's up to you uh, roof have to be a little more lighter or darker than the sky that you have behind it we all create in different uh, paintings even if we following the um, same tutorial it really depends how many white you put uh, on your sky layer so check right if um, sky you have behind a little more dark than I have so for sure roof have to be light if you have a very very cloudy light sky better better smarter to choose dark roof uh, now I'm painting windows you know, just with a flat little brush and you know what um, I see the roof not really corrected in shape I will fix it a little later now it's time to add also windows it's just a very thin lines on the side of uh, this building uh, thin and dark uh, also uh, remember frames we have to paint it not uh, everywhere but at least one or two little light details have to be and um, window frames of course have to put it there i think white will be nice what do you think for window frames yeah. looking good also for first floor that's it and uh, the roof already dried so um, I want to correct it because uh, I have to get better shape also I want to add a bit more light um, on my main building uh, roof and uh, let's correct this one mm. I didn't use the mold stick and I'm painting on table to be able to uh, make a video for you. Uh, this tiny mistakes easier to evade if you're painting on um, easel. It's just more visible. Now look, I'm using half dry paint. It's not watery at all. It's really hard a little amount of water inside and I am uh, you know just um, adding a bit more shade just a little bit under this roof on this building we have a different conditions of uh, paint it can be really watery and it can be half dry half dry paints have different properties it's painting more you know it's living like a colorful scratches not really a stroke and I like it also just to try to you know use a different amount of water in your paint now uh, I'm painting must uh, for both boats um, 
and it's dark as I told you before and also I have to create a spreads spreads it's a special details on must on a sailing boat must that uh, helping to fix must um, so we have to paint it because it's just um realistic detail so we have to follow reality can't leave just um really a long mast without any others any other details and also there is a stress the fixing mast you know it's fixing from top to the um, sailing boat and it's very thin and it's have to be created just with a single move so now even if before we could evade using of small sticks now we you know we just can't go without uh, if you will chuck um, seascapes without lots of sailing boats uh, you will notice a lot and lots of stays uh, it's a different titles for them this is a side stay and um, it's also for stay we will paint it a bit later mm, and uh, normal sailing boat have a lot of you know it's looking as more as a uh, spider web a spider web of uh, this special um, things <laughs> don't really know how to explain to you uh, better to check how actually marines looking where both staying uh, and you will check there is lots of really thin as a threads thing as a threads lines it's not possible to create uh, without any help and uh, mole sticks it's a normal artistic tool i'm just uh, curious uh, why it's not so famous as uh, uh, palette knives for example or palettes it's just another type of tool very helpful very helpful uh, also I have to create um, spreads for white mast so I clean uh, my brush and now using white because behind it um, it's a dark background behind them so white uh, giving better contrast You have to check. Uh, for example, um, this mast it's half on a dark background and half on a light background. So here we have to use different colors. We will do it a bit later because um, on the left side I have just half of sailing boat, but uh, spreads uh, can be visible even uh, of this half so i i have to paint it as well again using mole stick today it's a ruler i have a normal one normal mole stick but again not everyone have it if you will decide you need it you need a special mole stick you can do it by yourself it's really easy it's just a plank of wood or you can uh, buy a professional one Also, now I'm painting the uh, force, uh, force tape. It's connecting the top of mast and the nose of boat. There is actually two more uh, between top of mast and uh, back part of sailing boat. Don't know, have no idea how it's calling.
Uh, I checked, it's calling probably a stern, so between stern and the top of mast, it's two more uh, stays. Stays, it's a thin metal, but on painting, of course, it's looking as a really, really, really thin uh, threads, metallic. It's metallic, so that's why um, it's have a different colors. It depends on what it's visible. Please be sure you not put the ruler or mold stick on top of your painting. It's always di distance between my ruler and my painting. And for last one. It's time to um, add darker color for mast and um, details where we can see it on a light background. And that's it. Some details of uh, masts or um, spreads can have the windows, even if building is dark behind it. Some windows can be light, so don't be lazy if you see some light details behind, please add black or just a dark color on the left side of a mast, you know, for better contrast. Now I want to create decorative details, it's a flags. Oh, here, you know, just follow your imagination and your own taste. Flags can be really different. Um, actually, for celebrations, uh, we have special flags uh, where each special one have a meaning. Have a meaning. So, um, who know the alphabet of flags? They even can read the words uh, on ships, but. Uh, I don't want to create any phrases, I just want to um, add colorful details. Uh, red, mm, I like red, um, not mixing till the pink look, it's just red and white together, just topped a little bit on a palette and after I'm taking mix on my brush, that's it. Next one is yellow. Yellow will look good also here. I want to create more warm tone. Uh, so um, yellow, I have a lemon yellow here. So for um, more warm uh, tone, I added little, uh, just a little amount of red. And white, of course, flax um, have to be light, really light for contrast. Uh, only green color, I think, will be not fit to this um, composition at the moment. We don't uh, put any green before, I even didn't open tubes with the green, so um, I'd say I don't want to create greens, but blue. Blue probably will be just a perfect also. Let's create some blue. Uh, I choose ultramarine. It's more juicy, more bright um, blue. Cobalt, you know, it's more shady, not that bright blue. That's it. Blue is uh, enough here. If you have any doubts, um, you want more flags, or you know you, you have a doubts in colors, make one two steps. 
uh, and from the distance it's more visible if you have to put more details or you already have enough you know it's very important and i'm doing it step back and checking uh, the whole view uh, each 15 20 minutes very important that's it mm, i think enough flags <laughs> right uh, colorful enough and now we are creating reflection a reflection in uh, sea waves uh, first i have to plan reflection of dark parts we have a very deep shadow on the sailing boats that's why they are a really really dark line and now i'm planning um, biggest objects first that reflecting in the water brush brush is is uh, the most important um, tool here and actually it's a work of tool all reflecting in the water it just depends what brush you using for the uh, this kind of um, paint uh, in my opinion the best choice it's uh, a flat brush it can be slanted or just a normal uh, flat brush uh, but uh, don't I'd say uh, don't take oval um, oval shape just choose the normal one and lines strokes that you're making have to be not longer than two three centimeters make it short why because these they are not long long waves we have only in the ocean but this is not the ocean for sure this is a river i think and if even if it's a sea there is also small size of waves so each stroke means wave if you will choose a very small stroke like one centimeters you will have a very very small waves effect if you have if you choose a longer brush like uh, one centimeter i have now uh, the edge of brush um you will have a little bigger uh, longer waves i have a brown building uh, so this color i have to put in reflection uh, also all uh, colors we have in our composition we have to reflect in uh, the river it's a color of sky my sky now uh, have a lot of violet in it actually i thought you know to put there more blue mm, to create more a day look but i also like uh, violet it's uh, looking more as a early evening i'd say now so i really like the color now same light violet uh, here in water all strokes you do it's a short and i'm working with the edge with the edge of my flat brush you don't have to cover all um, surface of your paper it's not needed because remember we already did first layer of white so it's not the clear paper it's not if you're working on a canvas it's not a clear canvas it's already a bit of white there some details can be really dark in these reflections because a building we have really dark there and it's almost clear black now mm. also on top of this black waves i will put uh, more white reflex uh, later i just want to let it dry now 
、uh, reflection, wavy reflection, can have many, many layers. It can have、uh, three, four layers, and it's looking just awesome in the end. Just don't make any blur, any blend there. Don't try to create cloudy, too smooth effect on the water. Uh, water actually have no blending in it because it's lots and lots and lots of million、uh, edges of small waves. So no blend, just、uh, brush strokes, and they all have to look horizontal. Vertical lines are only painting for、uh, must. Because must a really wide, long and thin. So for them, I can create vertical strokes, very small one, and that's it. In the process, while you working on this、um, base, you have to compare what you have on top, on the upper part of your painting, and what you have in your reflection.、Uh, if you missed anything, like、uh, for example, missed red or maybe、uh, some yellow、uh, details. You always can add there. Make two, st three steps back. Look in general if it's looking good enough already, or you have to add somewhere more details. Compare, always compare if、uh, this white must already have a reflection. If not, just add it more. And this way, step by step, minute by by minute, detail by detail, you will create reflection of each detail. I don't、uh, want to create reflection of small building actually because I don't know. I have the sky color in this corner. Sometimes you can't see the actual work of my brush because I have to put、uh, my brush vertically. Really, in this moment you can't see the、uh, strokes how it's going、uh, because、uh, my hand always covering the brush. But that's mean. In this moment you have the same. You have to.、Uh, Hold your brush vertically, right?、Uh, that's it. I'm just checking if if I have、um, enough shadows. Shadows here. I think it's good enough. A little more shadow here in reflection. Always stripes, and I missed reflection of this dark must. Just a little bit, not everywhere, and that's it. Just put the sign, and our cityscape is done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It wasn't easy, but it was a lot of fun and pleasure to paint.、Uh, it was a painty cat. Subscribe. We will have more interesting tutorials in the future.